Hello everybody. I want to talk a little bit more about half halts and how you can become more aware about when and how to apply them in the different parts of your riding. And today I want to give you an example on how you can condense your horse's canter by applying half halts gradually but you know firmly with a little bit more intensity. So in order to do that, you have to understand and to remember how the half halt works. And I always say the half halt in all three gates consists of three components, the driving component, the inhibiting and the releasing. And all of our seat and our, you know, leg, seat and hands are involved in this process. And the horse receives these nuances of uh, fluctuations in energy by responding in essence in ideally of course <laughs> by condensing his or her frame meaning they're taking up a little bit more weight in the hind end while the front end becomes a little lighter and a little bit more elevated in the widest sense right and so you can look at some of my other videos that talk a little bit more in detail about these things um suffice to say i want to apply my lower leg which is the mostly the driving aid but it could also be the inhibiting aid when um, I put it a little bit farther back so as, as you can see right now <laughs> works very well with Jamaica some horses are more some horses are less sensitive to that positioning but in the canter you in in essence want to visualize your aids as if you are a jellyfish I always say you know in the wave motion that each canter strides you know, offers to us as a rider to sit in, in the deepest part of that wave motion. You want to scoop your horse with your lower legs and go into driving and kind of picking up mode. So it's on, and then if you come up in the wave motion, you kind of release the pressure. And also the same thing goes for the thighs. When you go down, you're scooping, but your thighs have to be sort of relaxed. The knee pressure is minimal if not close to zero just to be fully absorbed into that beautiful movement that that you're experiencing right then when you come up out of the depths of that valley of the wave motion you're going to cup with your lower legs without using your heels and you're going to grip not gripping in a sense of holding and clenching but in, in a sense of picking up closing your knee pressure a little bit and bringing your horse up as if you're going to say here come up with me come up with me right and your core muscles and of course your your rein aids support this process while you know your horse comes up basically your belly button comes forward and i'm just going to do this here in the walk for you slowly and you can massage the reins with a tiny little bit of a squeeze every time your belly button comes forward so that is you know part of the regular aid system for the canter and then when you enhance it by half halting by saying to the horse you know not quite so forward forward in in the sense of you know larger strides Con let's condense a little bit let's pick up a little bit more weight behind that means a little bit more increased um, knee closure a tiny little bit faster perhaps with the rain you're squeezing and releasing might be coming into a little bit more in sync with your pelvic rotation that you know is facilitated by the wave motion of the canter and in in that sense you want to think about your pelvis as scooping up more than pushing forward right so scooping up in sort of that forward backward sort of that elliptical way right okay so and then we're going to take Jamaica into a working trot here. I'm already keeping that trot on a, a little, little bit smaller scale, smaller, quieter steps. Then I'm going to spiral into my 10 meter circle here in the center of a 20 meter circle. And I'm going to go into a walk. Walk, walk, walk. I'm going to leg yield her a little bit on this small circle on, in the center of the 20 meter circle. And out of this, I'm going to invite her to go into the up transition of a canter that is a little bit more measured than what a normal working canter would be for her, right? And here I'm half halting, half halting, half halting, knee pressure, lower leg, knee pressure, lower leg, little squeezes with the inside rein, outside rein catches my inside leg. I'm going to, I'm going to spiral back into the circle sit a little bit heavier to the inside 
always, always half halting, half halting, half halting, and then there's your beginning of a of a walk transition. You know, I kind of let her drop into that. That wasn't quite so perfect yet, but it's not about perfection. It's about development. So here is my leg yielding again, leg yielding, leg yielding, leg yielding. Helps her to step underneath herself and into the up transition of the canter. Half halting, half halting, half halting. Smallest little baby canter steps that I can ask from her. Spiraling out gradually. And then we're going to go a little bit, not for too long. This is very hard for a horse that isn't used to going in this little bit smaller canter stride. So right now I'm going to um, spiral right back in. Sit to the inside, half halt, half halt, breathe out and walk and long rein, right? And so that is one way how you can start with your know, canter walk transition um, play playfully. <laughs> and just say to the horse, look, by going into the spiral on the circle, I'm going to help you understand that your steps need to be a little bit more condensed, a little bit more, you need to take up a little bit more weight underneath yourself as the horse. <laughs> And if you don't, you can't spiral and you can't do these small circles. It's just not impo not possible, right? And then when you get to a little bit smaller, maybe an eight meter or whatever, the smallest circle that you can work on, it, when you get to that part, don't stay there very long. Breathe out, sit into the deepest part of the wave motion, and then let yourself be taken into a beautiful walk transition and think in the walk transition you have to already think about the walk aids so otherwise the horse will just stop right and the leg yields just help you and the horse to remember we're not going to you know do something super hard we're not going to run into the canter and you know so it's a it's a really really lovely sequence of different little things that you can say to your horse and then you make it easier for her to add this little puzzle piece to her repertoire and to yours. And, you know, it makes for a happy horse and a happy rider when you're, <laughs> when you're progressing like that. Thank you so much, Jamaica. Thank you for watching and happy riding.